What's up, YouTube? Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you all the improvements that I made to this thing, as well as uh, do a quick teardown um, so you can see kind of how I designed it so that it basically stacks together so that it's easy to, uh, you know, remove components if you want to change out the rotor or the coils or whatever. You know, since this is an evolving project, um, with my last few motors that I built, they were kind of complicated to, to tear down. And um, that's the one thing that I kept in mind when I was creating this design. So what this motor is, is basically just three coils spaced at 120 degrees apart. And um, each coil is wrapped with 19 gauge American wire gauge, um, magnet wire, 40 turns and one ohm each. This is a flywheel. Um, I don't even know where I found it. It's just like a, a round piece of steel that I painted back black and um, basically printed out a little um, container for it to uh, evenly space it on the rotor shaft so that it's um, nice and smooth when it rotates. Not a lot of vibration. I got a reflective piece of tape here for my tachometer for measuring the RPMs. It's wired in a Delta style um, wiring pattern. Um, you can look that up, it's super simple. And then uh, it's attached to an off the shelf uh, electronic speed controller. And it's uh, controlled by um, this little servo tester. And it says on it, do not exceed 17 volts. So I run it around 14 just to be on the safe side and I get plenty of RPM and plenty of torque on this thing. The only downside on this design is it doesn't self-start. I got a little bit closer moving from, you know, a two-pole magnet to a four-pole magnet. Initially, my rotor was this thing, which is basically two one-inch by one-inch neodymium magnets side-by-side side to squeeze the uh, magnetic field out. Make it more, you know, elongated and stronger. So it's a north and south, right? So now I got a different one on here that's basically north, north, south, north, south. And I think I want to even go with an eight pole motor and a haulback um, arrangement to uh, focus all the flux on the outside of the, uh, the rotor to increase the, uh, you know, magnetic field. For more torque because i what i where i want to end up with this thing is or this design maybe not this one um is uh i want to put it on my little uh, my boy's uh electric scooter or sorry electric dirt bike and um see what that does see if it can haul him around that'd be kind of cool to have a 3d printed motor you know that propels a little kid around the yard that'd be awesome but i think after Designed in this one, I think I want to go with six magnets. Sorry, six windings. Yeah. And then I want to use about eight magnets on my poles. Anyway, uh, I'll be designing that. And uh, But first, let me just show you how this thing runs. I'm hooking it up to a bench power supply at 14 volts. And um, when you first put power to this... Um, yeah, see, it'll have make like a startup noise. Hear that? And then it'll try when you give it a little bit of juice, it'll try to engage. So you just give it a little spin, and you'll hear it catch. And then we're off to the races. So I I haven't even really idled this thing up yet. So it's basically I'm gonna turn it down just so I can barely. You know, hear it. And I'm going to measure the RPMs. So, basically, at an idle, it's um, it's about 2,000 RPMs. You know.
Okay, to be honest with you, I'm kind of too kind of scared to uh, go any faster than that because I I had like <laughs> lesser motors fly apart on me, and even though I have this wrap, I don't know how good this this tape actually uh, withstands that amount of uh, stress. So uh, I'm going to end it on that, and I'll, I'll do a quick teardown so you can see the uh, how this thing all goes together. Okay, for the teardown, I'm just going to remove the uh, the flywheel, and this is just friction fit. Okay, so each piece is is stacked and it's held together by this strap. So you don't even have to remove the strap all the way if you want to do a quick repair and unload it upside down. Because the way I got my coils wired, I don't want to inter interrupt that. So just loosen the bottom one up and then loosen the top one enough so that it basically slides down. This little spacer, remove that friction fit, and the top just slides off. Okay, Ooh, my bearing slid off too. Anyway, the bearing fidget spinner you can actually lubricate these with uh, carbon powder, graphite powder, and uh, it makes them a lot more um, lubricated. It's like a dry lubricant. And um, they just fit in there nice and easy. Um, eight millimeter shaft is perfect for this, for these bearings. And then this is basically like a decorative uh, spacer ring. And then the main body middle comes off. Then you got another spacer ring. You don't have to remove that. But if you want to change your rotor out, you basically kind of pull these up out of the way. And then your rotor comes out. And looky there. So, 9,000 RPMs makes the tape come off a little bit. So, we're going to add some zip ties on that. Just to see. Just to hold the tape on. Because all of this um, fiber reinforced tape should be good enough for... Dang it. north-south north-south and these are I think half inch by half inch by three inch bar magnets neotype so this is super easy to put all back together main body comes on and I like this design so I just want to swap out you know different coils super simple the only kind of complicated part is getting this top on because you might have to wiggle wiggle those coils out of the way and then tighten up the straps and you're good to go. Actually, I can remove this. Good to go. Okay, thanks for watching.